Duke fans, we are back here with episode eight of the Brotherhood podcast. Very special guest here today, returning star sophomore Mark Mitchell. Uh, started, we just said, 35 games last year. Um, coming back for your second season. How are you feeling? We just wrapped up the summer, first day back. Mm-hmm. Or I guess not your first day back, but the upcoming week will be the start yeah. of another go-around. What, uh, how's you, how do you feel? Yeah, I feel excited. You know, it should be a good season. You know, just um, trying to get all the way back healthy and things like that. Obviously, I'm good now, but um, just getting back in shape, getting ready uh, to attack this season. Let's start, um, try to give our fans a little bit of insight and, in, in, um, I guess, viewership into our trip to Chicago that we just got back from, I think, a week and a half ago now. Mm-hmm. Um, what was your favorite part of that? You've spent some time around Chicago, right? Being from Kansas, that's the, um, that's the, nah, most, that's the only... biggest real city close to where you grew up. <laughs> I mean, I guess. I mean, I've been in Chicago. I only went there for the McDonald's All-American game, and it was, um, it was like in March. So it was a little cold, a little gloomy. Yeah. It was really cool seeing Chicago, like in the in the summertime, getting to be on the water. Uh, it definitely was a whole 180 because I didn't have the best impression of it uh, initially. But after the trip, I loved it. I would uh, love to go back. It's a different city in the summer. When Chicago summers, like I think it's number one, but yeah, during the winter it drops down to yeah, it, it could drop down terrible. to six, seven, eight. <laughs> um, how about, I mean, obviously you mentioned uh, the McDonald's All-American game. You're a big McDonald's guy in general. Uh, was that the favorite <laughs> yeah. part of the, was that your favorite part of the trip? Uh, it wasn't my favorite part of the trip. Obviously, I do eat, I eat McDonald's just like anyone else. They make it seem like I eat it more than everybody else. I, I actually probably don't even be the most on the team anymore, honestly. But uh, actually, I think being on the yacht in the water, yeah, just cooling with the guys, having a good time, uh, that was probably my favorite part of the trip. Obviously, everything we did was pretty cool, but I think – being on the water and just being on a boat. I've never been on a boat like that before, so that was pretty cool for me. Yeah, nice. Um, you spoke about the the McDonald's All-American game. One of my first, this might have been one of my first impressions of you, mm-hmm. and also one of my like favorite lines of you overall. When you got here and they were talking about, I think it was you and Derek were talking about the McDonald's All-American game, all you could talk about and all you mentioned was how annoyed you were that they didn't give you McDonald's <laughs> at any point throughout yeah. the experience. And yeah. didn't you have, like, a really good game? Didn't you lead the, I did. the whole I game I, in scoring? I had 19 points. My team lost, though, so obviously I didn't get MVP. Derek was actually MVP. Um, I didn't even know that. Yeah. What did so, he score? I think he had 13. He had, like, 13, like, 10, and 7. It's just, so yeah, like all That's around. not bad. Yeah. yeah um, they beat us by 20. But, yeah, um, they didn't give us any McDonald's. <laughs> really no gift card. <laughs> Nothing, like – you would think like shooting McDonald's All American, you get like at least a hundred dollar gift card or like free for a year or something. But we ain't get nothing. There was no cheeseburgers, no McNuggets, no sausage and cheese biscuits, nothing. But it was a great trip though. I loved it. But uh, no that McDonald's. was my first first Mark. One of my first Mark Mitchell interactions. Walking to the locker room and hearing you guys talk about that, and yeah. you scored the most points. And all you seemed to care about was how <laughs> much bullshit it was that they didn't give you a gift card or any free McDonald's. Yeah. Yeah, That's great. All right, so let's go back then to your time pre-Duke, talking about the McDonald's All-American game. You're from Kansas. You're being you know, recruited by a lot of yeah. high-level schools. Uh, when did Duke come into the picture, and what, um, what made the difference for you to want to come here? Yeah, actually, um, Duke was probably the last, the last school to come into the picture. Obviously, they had the thing going on with Coach K. They didn't know what he was going to do. Yeah. Um, I remember Coach Shire called me, and he was probably going into my junior year. Um, just, just kind of introducing himself, trying to tell me about Duke and things like that. Um, but it wasn't for a while, probably till like after my junior high school season that they really started actually recruiting me. Um, you know, after they kind of seen where it was going with um, Shire and what Coach K was going to do. So they were actually the last school. They last school to offer me for sure. I remember that. Um, it was pretty late, probably like July, going into my senior year. But we already had a pretty good relationship going into that, you know, when they officially offered me. Um, in July, they actually didn't get to see me play at all because I was hurt. Really? So, um, but they did in high school season. But uh, you know, I was um, I was really heavy on UCLA. My brother um, lives in LA. Um, I loved it out there. You know, it was great staff, things like that. So, it really came down to Duke and UCLA um, to the end. And you know, I thought I was gonna go to UCLA for a while, but um, I came to Countdown. You know, I had a visit with D Live and Reek, and <laughs> and we just had a good time and just being in Cameron, being around the fans and things like that. Definitely a uh, my heart was always here, so I think in the end that was the decision I made, and it was the best decision I could have made. Nice. Um, you talked about – I didn't know you were hurt in high school. Was it your, was it your knee? No, I uh, dislocated my elbow oh. my junior year of high school. That was uh, something you don't usually hear about in basketball, but it was definitely a most serious injury I've had. Um, I was off like the whole AAU season. 
I came back. My arm's fine now, but it was definitely uh, scary when it happened. Um, okay, and you actually mentioned uh, your brother out in LA. I was going to ask when we're talking about off the court stuff. Your siblings uh, are most of them out. I know they're they all work. They're pretty high up in the music industry. Are they all out in LA? Um, no, my um, my brother lives in LA. Um, he's lived there for probably like almost 15 years now. Um, he does like uh, he used to be really into dancing. He's in um, acting, DJ, and stuff now. Just anything with entertainment he pretty much does my sister lived there for about 10 years um she's back in kansas city now yeah um my oldest sister then my sister that's actually close in age to me she um lives in chicago she's a flight attendant so nice mm -hmm. you ever see yourself going into entertainment uh, uh maybe like after i've done playing basketball when I'm like 40 or so <laughs> okay uh last thing off the court i wanted to bring it up because it's uh my favorite thing i also hear you talking about mm -hmm. how long did you work at walmart in high school <laughs> I worked at Walmart uh, from March 2020 to October when they fired me. What? Uh, <laughs> you were fired from Walmart? I was fired just because, like, I, I couldn't go as much anymore. So it was just kind of like, you know, it was just time. It was just time. But I, you didn't quit. You just I was a, stopped I was, showing up? Yeah. I was a good worker. Um, you know, it was the pandemic. So it was remember the pandemic, uh, and I had nothing to do. So I was like, and I needed a car. So this is going into my junior year of high school. And I was like, dang, like, and they were like, shoot, Walmart, Dillon's, hy all the stores were hiring. So I was like, I'm going to go get a job. And I worked. I was working five days a week, eight hours a day, five days a week, because I didn't have nothing else to do. And uh, it was a good experience, though. Um, I think everyone should, like, work once in a while. It got, I mean, obviously, I couldn't do it no longer than mm -hmm. I did, but uh, it was good. I remember the first day I was there, actually, um, it was the first day they were, like, saying everything was going to shut down. And it's my first day, and they put me on the cashier, like, the cash register. And I was just like, and there was like, everyone's coming. So they're like, this is the day where there's no toilet paper. There's no, there's nothing. Oh yeah, people so are coming people, in. Everyone's coming through thousand dollars worth of stuff. And I can barely work the thing. And they're like, ah, you got it. So that was just crazy. And um, yeah, but I mean, it was a good experience. I'd do it over again if I had to. So. You would do it over again? But I mean, I would never work there. Yeah, okay. I think it was good. Just... I don't think they want you to. If, you, if they fired you, it's a <laughs> slim chance they rehire you. Yeah, but. I you mean, still have the vest? I would. Uh, yeah, I still got it. It's definitely at home somewhere. I had like four vests. I'd so. love to wear the Mark Mitchell Walmart vest out for Halloween this year oh, or something. I might have to be, bring it. That'd be a high level high costume for me. I got you. Um, okay, last, very last question off the court stuff. Um, it seems like everybody in your class, or at least all the young guys, there's everybody seems to think that you are the messiest. <laughs> of the freshman class, they always talk about your car being the grossest. What's that about? Uh, my car probably is pretty dirty. I just be I just be having a lot of stuff in there. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm not that messy though. Obviously, Tyrese be gassing it. Flip, they damn near OCD. So, Flip but, does. Flip's locker is, is crazy. Yeah, so they're super clean. Uh, me and Jaden definitely probably had the dirtiest room. Left. Well, actually, no. Derek and Derek's room was a lot dirtier than ours. But. My car is pretty messy, but it's it's about to be. I clean it up. I just be having shoes. I be having clothes. Um, dirty clothes. That's <laughs> not that dirty clothes. It's like <laughs> extra stuff because we be having so much stuff. Like I can't just put it on my dorm. So it'd be sitting in my car. Um, no, forget to ask because you you catch a lot of uh, a lot of flack for for that in the locker room. Um, okay, let's move into to the season here. Um, you show up on campus. Um, we have a great preseason. Obviously, you come out uh, the first few games of the year. Can you just give me your take on the whole, I guess, broad season in general, um, and specifically how you felt about in your role and, and your game? Yeah, I think it, I think it went pretty good. Obviously, I started pretty strong. Um, I think uh, I was just coming in trying to do what I could, you know, to just make an impact, to stay on the court. Um, obviously, um, had some ups and downs in there, but I think um, overall it was really good. You know, I finished the year really strong. Um, just kept working, kept getting better. I think it showed throughout the year just yeah. that you never, um, I never like just stayed in that place, but just kept trying to get better. Even when it wasn't going for me, I was just working every single day. And I think it just showed in the end. So I think it went pretty good overall. Yeah, absolutely. Did you have a, uh, it was apparent to me as soon as you stepped foot on campus, but um, you being, you know, one of our best defenders and getting the hardest mm -hmm. assignment uh, almost every game because you can guard so many different positions. Yeah. You know, how did you feel about that role coming in? Is that something you were excited about? Is that something you felt pressure going into these games? Um, I don't really feel pressure. Um, you know, on defense, I just try to make it hard for the opposing, whoever it is. You know, um, I think that's just something I kind of grew into was playing defense. You know, obviously, I didn't. I always like pride myself on playing defense, but I think um, 
being at Sunrise, my senior high school, playing for uh, Luke Barnwell, he was a big defensive guy. Mm -hmm. So I think when I got on campus, I was kind of a step, you know, in ahead of some of the other younger guys, just from knowing all defensive schemes and things like that, and then just also just trying to stay on the court. You know, I, you can't have the ball in your hand on the time. So I was just trying to make an impact, and you know, being playing defense is something I could do. So I just decided to take another level. So it was some the coaches always allow me to do. Absolutely. Um, how about a, I asked Tyrese and Flip and the other freshmen this, the biggest surprise of college basketball for you? Um, I think um, just um, realizing that experience was like very important. You know, when you're younger, I think you think like, ah, oh, like they got um, four or five stars and they got more talent, but they keep losing the, but like just, just knowing the game and knowing the game of college basketball makes a world of difference. I think, um, especially going in this year, just for our team, you know, not just being super young anymore, having some older guys with some new guys, I think it'll make a huge difference. Cause I think not like just coming in, you can't undermine how much experience really matters when you get into ACC play and just playing older teams, especially on the road, just, just knowing what's going to happen and expecting that makes a big difference. Yeah. How does your mindset change when you're talking about that experience for you specifically, mm -hmm. when you think about <clears throat> yourself last year as a freshman going into these games yeah. versus this upcoming year, is there anything you can think of tangibly that that you're gonna you know have a different mindset about? Um, I don't know if it's a different mindset. I think um, I just maybe just not even preparation. I think just knowing what to do on the court. I think just you can just think one step ahead. Um, obviously the college game is a little different NBA and just the way you have to play it and and even from high school. So just knowing what to do, knowing how to think the game, just being ready in certain parts of the game and not not having to get ready it definitely makes a big difference. Yeah. Um, did you have a most memorable or favorite part of this first season? Um, probably like the first dunk I had in Cameron against Jacksonville. That was pretty. That was just a good moment. It was the first bucket of the season. My first, you know, your first bucket. Oh, it was a lob, right? Yeah, it was a lob. Yeah, we drew that up. Play. Yeah. So uh, you were the first points of the season. I did. I, I did. didn't know that. That was a. Uh, it was just a cool moment, a special moment. Obviously, when the ACC and other things we did as a team, but I think uh, just the energy in that moment, you know, is just surreal. It takes a lot of pressure off um, now being around college basketball for so long mm -hmm. and as a player, but also as like a defender, like playing against guys. It takes so much weight off your shoulders if that first bucket you get, yeah. obviously of your career, but also mm -hmm. like of each game. If it's a layup or a dunk, it yeah. it oh takes so God. much like stress and like pressure yeah. off. We used to say that a ton for like shooters or just guys that like the yeah. opposing, you know, higher scorers in the other mm -hmm. team. You don't want to give them a layup to start the game. If they're yeah. going to start the game hot, it's got to be tough shots. It's got to be deep threes. Because if yeah. you give them that layup, like me and you know, and I'm sure yeah. you could feel it, if that first one goes down as a dunk or a layup, like yeah, you don't have you don't feel the energy. You don't think you're just feeling. Even if you're not, yeah, you get you see the first one going. Even if you get like two free throws or something, it's ah oh, dang, like he's feeling it today. Yeah. Like, the first two are out of the way. It's yeah. like it's moving down from here. Um, let's get to the end of the season. Can you talk me through? Uh, we'll get more into the I guess the injury. Uh, against Tennessee. I knew that was pretty last minute and it, you were going through. Can you just talk me through that whole process when you actually heard it and then kind of what was behind the decision? Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it was crazy. People thought I got hurt in shoot around. I guess that's what they were saying. I actually, I got hurt against Oral Roberts like in the yeah. first half and I felt it, but I just kept playing. My adrenaline was running. I was like, ah, like, you know, we all played through a little. It just felt like a tweak. Yeah, like we all played through little nagging, little injuries and things like that um, all the time. But um, we got to shoot around the next day, and I was like trying to push through it, and I was just, it wasn't feeling like it should, like you know yeah. what I'm saying. So, but even to the game, like I was like, oh, I'll be fine. Like we all have those things happen, and um, I got. We tried to do everything I could before the game. I went out there and warmed up, and I just, I, remember I was talking to Emil. I was, I was shooting. I was like, I don't think I can play. Like. Cause it's just, I just couldn't get it going how I needed to, so I decided to sit out. Um, obviously, it was painful. It was a painful moment in the locker room before the game and yeah. things like that. But I tried to play. You know, um, it's not like I was like trying to sit out or anything crazy. Like some of these things I was hearing was crazy. Like I was just hurt. Like I simply couldn't go. I played every game. Other game it was just I couldn't go that day. Were people saying that you were trying to like on, like, yeah, like on social media and stuff? Like, oh, he's trying oh, to like, okay. improve his drafts. That was so stupid. I was like, bro, I literally just played the last game. Like, and you also started. You played every. <laughs> you started every all thirty five games That's before that saying. point. Um, yeah, I remember that moment in the locker room because uh, that was the first of a number of things that went wrong throughout that yeah. that game. But uh, no, that was a tough. 
uh, a tough moment in the locker room, and obviously it came right down to like minutes before the game. Yeah. Um, what exactly was it? Obviously, you got surgery a few days yeah. after the season. It was a partial tear in the what? Yeah, I had like I had like a little tiny piece like of tear my meniscus. Um, it wasn't nothing serious, nothing crazy. I recovered in like a month and a half. Uh, yeah, it just even like even I think even if we would have went farther in the tournament, I might have been able to play just because like it calmed down. Because by the time I got the surgery, I was like. I forgot I was hurt because it wasn't hurt no more because it just calmed down. I didn't I didn't like tear anything big. Like, it was like a super small tweak. Yeah. That's how I was able to finish the rest of the last game before that because um it wasn't that big. Like it wasn't anything crazy. So um but I'm good now. No problems. No nothing. Um obviously I was out at the beginning of summer because I hurt my quad. That was a whole different injury. Yeah. Um something different. But my knee is fine. Hundred percent. You feel back? Yeah, you feel back to hundred percent. Yeah, I'm good. I'm straight. Yeah, it, it, Look good in scrimmages yeah, towards the end shoot. of the summer. I've been moving fine. So. Um, no, absolutely. That's, that's, that's great to hear. Um, so I guess you're going through this whole thing at the same time of rehabbing this injury. Um, and I remember you announcing pretty quickly after that you were going to decide to come back. But mm. can you talk me through that decision? Obviously, the whole year, your, your name's on draft boards. So uh, I'm sure you had conversations with agents and family and whoever. Mm -hmm. uh, what was you know what was that? What was your thought process there? Um, I think obviously the injury made it a little easier because um, I couldn't I couldn't work out for teams and mm -hmm. you know I was um, obviously in a range where it was kind of like I needed to work out probably to help myself. Obviously I could have went, but um, I just wanted to do more. I just wanted to improve my game. You know I didn't I'm in no rush um, yeah. to get to the next level. Obviously when my time comes, my time comes, but. I just want to improve my game, get better, and just be 100% healthy. I don't want to go into things like not being myself all the way. So, yeah. you know, just talking with my family, my people, and obviously having – um, remember Tyrese came and told me he was coming back. And, you know, having someone you're close with like that decide they're coming back, you know, it makes it a lot easier, you know, just – you know, you don't want to be around and not have people that you know, you know, yeah. some of your close friends and just have it be so much different. But having Tyrese and then um, having Flip back too, you know, just – it made it a lot easier for me. You were after Tyrese. Did you did, wait? Did you decide before Flip or after Flip? I was before Flip. Was a couple weeks after us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Flip made that big video. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, how much? So I didn't even know that though. Tyrese, did he tell you? Did Tyrese try to like pitch you on coming back, or was he just um, like kind of letting you know? Nah, I think it was more. Um, we were kind of just feeding off each other. Like, what you doing? Like, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Um, and we were we were talking about it before. Um, then I found out how to get surgery, things like that, and it's, he, I think he told me before I had fully decided, and and it was kind of it was kind of quick though, kind of yeah. the same span. He was pretty, he was really quick. I think I was like a week or two yeah, after him. So, but yeah, we just feeding yeah. off each other. Well, that's cool. You guys are, I mean, talking about it together. Nobody, nobody asked me, but uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we well, did ask you though. He was like, "Are oh, you coming back?" He, he well, yeah, but there, my bro. decision was not to to <laughs> take my name away from the NBA draft. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I feel you, I feel you. Okay, so. Now we're back here in the summer. Um, let's talk about expectations for next year. We kind of touched about it being mm -hmm. a more experienced group, but how about you personally? Uh, is there anything that you're looking to uh, adjust to your game or your role or, or kind of, you know, what are your thoughts about this season? What are you most excited about, I guess? Um, I mean, I'm excited about everything. Um, I think just taking a big role on the team, you know, um, on the court and off the court, obviously being someone that the younger guys look up to now is a little bit different. Um, and just just being better overall, you know, carrying the momentum we have from the end of the season um, into this season and just keeping that play continuing, just being a better player overall and just making better decisions on the court and just being more consistent, I think, um, is what I'm going to try to do. And obviously do things I did on the defensive end of the court last year and just carry that into this year and just keep improving. I feel like defensive player of the year in the ACC should be a personal goal of yours. Is that something you think about or care about? Uh yeah, I mean obviously I want to win accolades and all, all everything I can. But I think uh, on the defensive side of the ball, I'm definitely, you know, trying to aim towards that this year for sure. Yeah. Um, how about shooting the the three ball? You shot at a high clip mm -hmm. last year, high percentage. But you yeah. didn't take that many, and I know yeah. that's something that you were stressing, you know, before and after practice, getting extra rep, getting extra reps at. Mm -hmm. Um, and that corner three is something that you know you're you're gonna have open ones and you know be mm -hmm. able to take and make and uh mm -hmm. the notre dame three comes to mind very quickly that uh essentially won us that game how much are you thinking about that how important is that to you this upcoming year um yeah obviously i shot the ball well last year i think i should have shot the ball a little more mm -hmm. um, i think this year i'll do that you know i'm just yeah. being being ready being confident 
you know, obviously continuing to work and improve my shot each and every day. But I think just being ready to shoot the ball, you yeah. know, and not turning down open looks and just open up the rest of the game. Obviously, if I can shoot the ball, then I'm going to get to slash and move and dunk and things that I'm good at and yeah. my strengths. So I think just shooting the ball well, continuing to get better is definitely going to open up the court for the rest of us and for myself. Yeah, I have a similar perspective on it too, just because uh, it's something I've been trying to work on is, mm -hmm. you know, taking open threes. And it's a, it's a weird confidence thing yeah. uh, when guys leave you open. Yeah. I don't know if you saw it, but like Draymond Green talked about it a few weeks ago or months ago maybe, because mm -hmm. he was just talking about how hard it is confidence guys when, how hard it is confidence wise when guys like close out short to you yeah. and leave you open. Is that something you, you battle with or is it just more so like, trying to make the right decision in the moment? Um, Obviously, it's, I'm a little different than Draymond. Well, yes, uh, yeah, but I'm yeah, more, yeah, yeah. I'm saying like, I was just interested in, like, guys will like close short, but it's not like super short, yeah, like yeah. they're still there, you know what I'm saying? So I think for me, it's just like catching it. And if they are sh off me, just, just shoot it. Yep. You know, I think for me, it's just like, I'm trying to jab and punt fake and so I can get to the bat, but sometimes I just got to shoot it just to show them that I will shoot it, that I'm going to open up this, for my team and for myself by just shooting the ball, simply if it goes in there, if it doesn't, um, and not just overthinking it and trying to jab and pump fake and things like that, which obviously sometimes I have to, but I think just shooting the ball to catch is definitely going to open up the, a lot for all of us. Yeah. Um, all right, I have a uh, surprise uh, section for you here that I think you're going to be excited about. Um, I mentioned earlier with the, the McDonald's uh, quote of, uh, of not getting McDonald's or the McDonald's All-American game, but you're famous in this locker room for having some interesting sports takes. So I have some <laughs> things written down in my notes app. I've just been writing them down periodically. Didn't know what I needed them for, but I'm glad I have been. I have a March, March, Mark Mitchell worst takes of all time section here. So I'm gonna read out some of your sports takes and you're gonna defend them if all you're right, ready for that. The first one is, I think you said this in Chicago actually. No, you said it a few weeks before. JaVale McGee could have done the same thing Wilt Chamberlain did. Ah, dang, I feel like I'm going to take some heat for that one. But no, no, you said it. If y'all are like, like really go watch. I mean, Wilt Chamberlain, like no shame. Like he's not in my personal top 10. He's not. I just don't see how we can do that. 100 um, points. Where's the footage? Oh, I forgot that. I forgot that that's where's part the, of this take. Where's the footage? You don't believe it happened. They say, I don't, it's not, that's not true. But they have footage of all this other stuff, but they don't have footage of the 100-point game. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. It's kind of fishy to me. Um, but you're telling me that, that JaVale McGee couldn't go back then and average like 40 and mm -hmm. 30? Like, why could he? I, I don't get why he couldn't. Like, from what I'm seeing, he was just – I'm just saying, I don't see why he can't. Obviously, people think that's a crazy take, but – I'm I'm watching it happen. I remember you catching a lot of a lot of uh, heat for it. I don't like completely. I think there's a ton of NBA guys that can go back and and absolutely dominate just with the evolution of the game and evolution of everything that goes into practice and yeah. health and all that. But I don't know, man. Will Chamberlain? Like he was only dribbling with his right hand. Like mm -hmm. I don't I don't see why Prime. JaVale McGee or Prime or not JaVale even, McGee. Prime JaVale, JaVale McGee. JaVale McGee is a good NBA player. He's a freak athlete. People will see him on Shaq in a fool and think he's like not some freak athlete, which he really is. Like, yeah. No, he yeah. That's why I and obviously I'm I picked JaVale McGee years ago just because I was had to think of someone big and athletic, but I don't know. All right. Um second take here. If you just watch Paul George's highlights, he's top ten all time. Yes. Yes, what I mean by that is, so if you just go, just go watch highlights. Like, we're just watching highlights of all the players ever. He's 6'9". He's mm -hmm. He can shoot. He can handle. Dumb athletic. He sits on defense. <laughs> like, if you're just watching the highlights, you're going to be like, dang, like, this dude, like, one of, might be one of the, like, best players, like, like he like his game is just beautiful. Like it's smooth. Like I don't who else is like Paul George? Here's my rebuttal, and I think it's the only rebuttal necessary. If you watch anybody's no, highlights, no, they no, all look like nah. a top ten player. Who? If you watch Trey Young, I'm not saying that. Trey Young well, is really good. So you're saying his like intangibles, his size, like, look, what he like, can do. That's you know what I'm saying. Look at him. Look what he's doing. <laughs> he's shooting, he's dribbling, like, he's passing, like he's running the pick and roll, like and he's going to come dunk on you, and he's going to 
be almost defensive player of the year. Like, so the only reason he's not top 10 is because he hasn't translated into winning in rings. Um, no, I mean, it might be some other things too, but <laughs> obviously, I don't think this is a crazy thing. Other people have said, like, Paul, like, if you just wa- if you just watch Paul George, like, don't get into the stats and he didn't do this. <laughs> and, and the that. winning and the other things that goes into being a, a top 10 player. <laughs> just, yeah. Forget all that. I don't think he's mean, a top 10 player. No, I don't. Only when he watches highlights. I don't think he's anywhere close to top 10. He's one of my favorite players personally. Yeah. Um, but if you just watch him play, like, whew, it's beautiful as it was. Um, you try to emulate your game after this? You're a big Kobe guy, aren't you? I am a big Kobe guy. Um, obviously, you try to emulate your game after a lot of people, but if your body don't move like that, yeah, I know. Like, you, can't, you can't. Kobe's pretty damn good when you watch only his highlights. Yeah, Kobe's in that top 10 group, too. Oh, yeah. Because so, of the five rings and the no, MVPs no, I'm saying and, you, I'm saying I'm purely watching though. <laughs> Kobe's in the LeBron's in the top ten. Shoot, Shaq probably. Can you just give your top ten then? <laughs> off just you pure have watching, like the pure. I don't know what you mean or, by pure watch. Top ten basketball players of all time. My top ten. I'm gonna go in no order because LeBron, Jordan, Kobe, Kareem, um, Steph's in there. Magic Johnson's in there. Lay Bird's in there, Tim Duncan. Am I missing? You have two more. Uh, I'm trying to think of people I'm missing. Um, Shoot, KD's in my top ten. Ooh. Um, I feel like I'm missing people. That's why I don't go Yeah, but this it. is a fine list. For for being infamous for bad takes, that's a fine. That's a good – I think that's, that's a fine group. Last – Worst take of all time. I don't completely disagree with this, but I've heard, I mean, this has been a big locker room debate and you get a lot of backlash for it. Drake is the LeBron of music. Yes. Yes, man. Um, like, like, really, first of all, look at their careers. Yeah. Obviously, it's not exact same time period, but, like, they've dominated this same kind of time period, like, of culture. Um, Drake's the biggest in the music game. Um, as far like they are, like they're in the same audience mm-hmm. almost. Like if you think about it, like Drake, LeBron. Like if you know Drake, you know LeBron. They're both at the top, and they both been at the top for so long, and they're versatile, like super versatile. Mm-hmm. Drake's versatile in his music. He be singing, he be rapping. And then LeBron, he's the most versatile player ever. Like they're pretty much the same thing, just in two different um, realms. Me, that's what I think personally. I don't. I don't mind it. Yeah, I think that's I, a it's, pretty. Uh, that's fine with me. I, it's really? just that music is so much more broad than the NBA because you have, I mean, you can go back as far as like the Beatles and Michael Jackson. Yeah, and it's hard to put Drake. Well, yeah, up. yeah, I'm, I'm like that's not even to say that Drake is, is like the greatest ever. I think he's per- personally, I think he's pretty close. Like, yeah. I don't know how people try to argue. Oh, like, uh, no, Drake is top five artist ever. But like I'm saying, but him and LeBron are like this in the same. Just okay. even the time period, like they're mm-hmm. the same person, pretty much. Great. Well, uh, as long as you have a defense for it, yeah, yeah. you just have to be ready to defend yourself. I'm always, I'm always going to defend Drake and Braun, always, <laughs> and Kobe. Um, okay, so we're going to end with some trivia then uh, here. Uh, I have five questions about fast food trivia for you. Um, <laughs> like you said, I guess this is a whole podcast of you defending yourself, but you defended yourself earlier and said that uh, you don't eat the most McDonald's on the team. I don't. But when you got here, you were going. How much? How many times were you eating Waffle House a week? Ooh, shoot, probably like three times. Me and C. Reeves eat Waffle House still. Um, I don't eat as much as I used to. Nah, I did when I first got here. The problem is in Durham, everything closes at at nine. Yeah. So like, we get out of practice at five. Like, I eat at five thirty six. I gotta eat again. Like, what's open? McDonald's, Wendy's, Waffle House. That might be it. Subway, yeah, yeah. maybe. Mm-hmm. So that's McDonald's we, your favorite? No, nah, Chick Fil A for sure. Okay, yeah, Chick Fil A for sure. That's a good answer. Um, okay, so I'm expecting you to do pretty well on this. Uh, I think I feel like the times. I think we've done trivia almost every episode here, and most guys get between yeah. three and four out of five. But All with right. your enthusiasm for fast food, I'm feeling a four or five here. All right, let's do it. Uh, Question one, what fast food restaurant is credited with introducing the first modern-day drive through window? So there's four options here. McDonald's, Wendy's, Burger King, or Sonic? That's McDonald's, right? Mm-hmm. Oh. Shoot. You have a second guess? What was the other one you said? Wendy's, Sonic, Burger, Burger King. King? Sonic? 
Mm-mm. Wendy's. Wendy's. Oh shoot. That's a tough. I mean, I didn't expect you to get it, but you know, whatever. I don't know. Oh for one here. Uh, you should get this one. Number two, what is McDonald's best-selling item on their menu of all time? The Big Mac? There's two. There's two items? No, no, no. The Big Mac is number two. They've sold the second, like, out of, oh. if you're thinking of, like, what has McDonald's sold the most of, Big Mac is number two. There's another menu item that's number one. The cheeseburger? Uh-uh. What's the best thing that McDonald's has, dude? I mean, nuggets? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Am I tripping? McDonald's. When you think of McDonald's, oh fries. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. Fries yeah. are the best. Fries are. They've but sold fri- the most fries. I wasn't thinking of fries. Cause I'm thinking like fries are like sides. Fries. You know what I'm saying? Because like, they're little. Yeah. Like it's just a bunch of. So I was saying like Big Mac is a whole thing. Oh, you were thinking them as more like items more than one item. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're over for two. I can't believe I thought that you were the guy that was gonna go four or five. Well, y'all be acting like I'm really the fast food person. I'm really not though. They just pin that on me. Um, okay, number three. Name every item you get when you order an all-star breakfast from Waffle House. Oh, this is an easy one. You get waffles. Yep. Or a waffle. You get a waffle. Yeah, you waffle. Get a waffle. You get two eggs. Yep. Um, two sausages. Yes, your choice of meat. So yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah oh, sorry. You got I yeah. Guess, that, I that, get that's sausages. Him. That's him. Um, hash brown. Yes. And, um, toast. Yep. That's all five. That was a lob right there. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, you're, you're one for three. Number four, I think you should get this because it's famously from here. Somewhat. Yeah, it is. Uh, number four, in what state did the first Chick-fil-A restaurant open? North Carolina, no? No. Is it close? Yeah. I mean, close enough. It's southeast. Southeast. Georgia? Yes. Oh, I knew it's that. Atlanta's there. We in Atlanta. I ate it for like four days straight one time. <laughs> But you're not the big fast food guy. <laughs> okay, if you're on it, when you when you used to play AU, what'd you eat? No, you're right. You're uh, that's right. what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, it was the only thing. Um, um, so. Yeah, they're definitely famously from Atlanta, I think. Yeah. Uh, okay, five. So you're, you're, uh, you're one for three. Uh, number five, which fast food restaurant has the most locations in the United States? This surprised me. Subway. Yes, Mark. Yeah. I did know that one. <laughs> it's also by like a crazy wide margin. Uh, Subway has 24,798 locations. The second one is uh, Starbucks. I won't really count that. The third, the third one is McDonald's. How many think McDonald's? How many, how many locations do you think McDonald's has? If star, if it can't be that much less. If like, Subway has 24,000. Shoot, like 20 maybe? 13,914. What? There's hmm. that many Subways? From Business Insider, yeah. And then Dunkin' Donuts has about 9,000. What? 7-Eleven has 7, 8,000. There's that many subways? I don't know. I couldn't believe it. I'm glad you got it right. <laughs> now, I thought that was going to be the hardest question. I just knew that because i seen that on like, TikTok or something. That subway has. Yeah. I think globally it's McDonald's, but at least in the U.S., subway by a, a far margin. Um, all right. Two, two for five, Mark, on what's supposed that's to really be really three for five. To... <laughs> <laughs> you, got, you answered a lot with the Waffle House, so that's good. Yeah. Maybe you're not. I'll, I'll start spreading some. I'm trying to tell I'll start you. telling the guys in the locker room that you're not a really a big. I'm really not number one. I'm not going to say who is. But it's not me, though. <laughs> it's not me. Okay. All right. Well, I'll let you get back to, uh, to grind. You got classes this week? No. Nah, I'm chilling. I'm you're chilling. not doing the orientation stuff? No, nah, I'm not. It's going to be got some on Friday. That's it. All right. Um, well, great. Thanks for, thanks for taking the time. And hopefully the fans got a little more insight into, into the life of Mark Mitchell. Not the biggest fast food guy on the team. I'm not at all. Uh, appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs>